Hi there, it's Karen here from Turquoise Treasures. Welcome back to my channel and this week we're finally getting back to doing Roxy's Weekly Challenge. Um, this challenge started I think a couple of weeks ago when I wasn't able to do any crafting. So um, I thought I would have a go at it because I really wanted to make these notebooks. It's, she's called it Making Notebooks from Old uh, Book Covers. Um, so although I did really want to have a go at making these booklets I don't have old book covers that, that the sort of things that she's got anything like none of my book covers are um, have got that kind of lovely patterning on the, of the one she was using but what I do have is quite a collection of these old diary covers um, I may have shown you these briefly in, in my um, craft room tour I've got a whole load of these old diaries that I had at work I have used all of them um, as glue books over the um, since I retired so over the last couple of years. They're all empty because I have used them all as glue books. Um, but I kept all the covers because they're really quite good quality, um, hard chipboard, I suppose. And I thought, well, they they will be quite a good book cover um, when I get around to it. It's just that because they're a bit smaller than the normal books that we make, I haven't used them yet. I did use one for when I. Um, for my daughter's wedding book um, that they are the guest book that they are asked us to make because I thought that was quite a nice neat size I think I used one of them for that but otherwise I haven't used any so I've got all these so I thought I'd I'd use one of those for this notebook challenge so I'm going to use the blue one um, just because just because I prefer the color I suppose if any of the color pokes through I'm going to try and cover up as much as I can so you don't really see too much of the color but if you do It'll be blue and that will be okay. So I'm just going to put these to one side. Just thought I'd, well, I'll just show you those. I've got a whole load of those, so I may use them again. Um, so yeah, all I've got to do with this, I've torn out a little bit of the looser backing paper and it's just like chipboard underneath. Um, but it's all going to get covered. And I think that's a part of the challenge that um, obviously Rachel didn't do um, on her covers because she, they you know they're fine as they are but I'm not going to have this show I don't want to have any of this showing or any more than I have to of this uh, cover showing so I've got to an added thing to do which is to cover those but first I need to cut them out of the book I, th I did just try it to see if I could do it with my scissors it's not too thick because I'm not cutting through the actual chipboard there and just cut the cut the spines off the spine, not spines, it's only got one. And I cut this one off as well. So to cut this. So that's kind of just a soft bit. I I don't think it's not a fabric, it's kind of a I think it's just a thick paper that it's covered with. So I'll just cut that off. Right. So what I think I want to do, instead of making it like this, I'm going to turn it like she did. She made two. I'm only going to make one. I think one's quite enough to be made to make um, to play in. Um, I already know the kind of the papers that I want to use to put in here. And I'll do that. I'll do that as part two, which is the same as uh, Rachel did. Although I did, I think she chose a lot of her papers on part one. But I'm not going to do that. I'll have enough to do to get these covers covered <laughs> and the spine done. So I have been umming and ahhing uh, a lot about what to use to cover this paper, uh, to cover this board. So I printed up a whole bunch of papers. Um, I really, I really do want to use a piece of this. This is actually um, some paper I got from Rachel. I don't know if it's rag paper, but it is quite thick. I don't think it's rag because it tears, but it does feel quite thick and it's clearly very old. And I really wanted to put a bit of this on, on here. Um, and I might put it kind of on the side there and then I have got a variety of papers and fabrics and I was trying to find papers and fabrics that would go together so the one I think I'm going to use although it's been it's been a bit of a bit of a toss up with another one or a couple of others this is a an Artie Mays paper that um, like a backing type paper I think it came from her beautiful birds kit but I'm not absolutely sure so there's that which has been has got a little bit of um, texty bits mixed in, or there's this one that's just 
just the kind of florally background. It's the same paper, but this one's just got a bit of text on it, and I quite like that. I think I prefer that. It just makes it a bit more interesting. Or I could use some dyed papers, like, like uh, coffee dyed paper. This is the Re Roxy Creations. I also like this. <laughs> this is another Roxy Creations. This is one of her end papers. Um, her antique end papers, I think it comes from her kit. And I really like that as well. But I have struggled more to find a fabric that I, I'm happy to put with this. Because my feeling was, if I'm going to use a, a piece of fabric as the spine, which is what I want to do, I want to do a fabric spine, never done that before. Um, I want it to be a fabric that I love. <laughs> it's going to be my little notebook that I'm going to perhaps play in a bit. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be very personal to me, this little notebook. So I've got a lot of my painted papers and art journal papers uh, pages to go in it. Um, so I want it to be a fabric that I really love on the spine. Why not? And none of the ones that would go with this are ones I particularly love. You know, they would work because they've also got to have that um, thickness to them. They've got to be strong enough to work as a spine. So kind of upholstery or curtain type um, fabrics. And a lot of the ones that I really love are not that strong or not very thick. So I've had to dismiss that even though I do like it. So I'm back down to these two. So I've got those and then I've got some fabrics that I have pulled out that I really like um, and I'm choosing between so this is this is a piece I've used lots of this over over the course of I've used it as a journal cover I've used it in different ways there are a couple of journal covers I've used this for so the only reason that I'm thinking hesitating about using this is because I have used it so much already because I love it but it has so many different parts to it um, so I do like that and I may still come back to that I also really love this piece just because it's just really really pretty and I'm very tempted to use that because I don't use this kind of thing very often but it does show the blue through a little bit that's the only thing that's holding me back on that one so I'm not sure because I was only going to put the paper up to the edge of the fabric but I think maybe if I take the paper right to the end and then put the fabric over the top that will solve that problem, won't it? And it actually will go quite well there. And it also works quite well with this one. In fact, I think this one might be my favourite, this paper. So maybe that's the, <clears throat> that's the paper chosen, I think. Very tempted to use this. I also have this lovely piece. So this is the trouble. I have too many lovely pieces and I can't make my mind up. It's been really difficult trying to decide. And I have this stripe on here or have this really pretty floral but I do want to put um, some sort of clustery piece there so I thought the floral might be a bit too much um, and this would be a bit might go a bit better it looks a bit more vintagey colour wise as well than the pink um, so I, I do quite like that it's not really I don't I, probably have to have some of the floral but on the back quite tempted by that actually it's quite a nice thick fabric it doesn't go brilliantly with the green that's the only thing so let's have another look <laughs> sorry about this guys I'm I, I thought I'd made my mind up but then I keep changing it um, would look quite nice with the coffee dyed paper and this is quite this is really pretty because it's got some patterning in it it's got a bit doily on it so I do like that as well. Maybe I, with a bit of this as well. I may even not need the book page if I use this. What do you think? That's quite pretty, isn't it? I like that. Okay, I think we might go for this combination. Because um, although, although this piece of fabric, I wouldn't say absolutely love it, it does mean I can put something else here to really pretty up the front cover. I do like, and I've not used this fabric before. I think it came in a pack of vintage fabric, so it is a vintage piece. And I don't need an awful lot of it actually, it's only that big. That might work quite well, because I could always put some lace over and, yeah. That's, I think that's what I'm, that's what I'm gonna do, I think. But I think the first thing I'm gonna have to do is cover the cover. 
I'm also thinking I'm going to oh sorry take the take the back piece away. Of course I haven't got enough of this printed to do the back. I might have to do the back in a different paper. Yes, I might do that. I'll have to think about that. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to try and decide, can I cover this paper and go over the edges? Because that would solve the problem of the rough edges then, wouldn't it? If I were to cut those corners off. I'm worried about the corners sticking out. I do. Because when I'm doing it with fabric, I always like to fold the corner in. Um, because then you don't have that the danger of, of the exposed corner. But this is a bit thicker to do that with. So I'm not sure how whether to do that or not. Okay, um, I think the first thing I need to do is tear it down. I'll just move it a little bit like that, make sure I've got enough. Tear a piece off. Doesn't matter if it's not completely straight, which is probably just as well, knowing me. As you can see, winter has come back to my part of the UK. It's just on the eastern side of the country, and not even all of the east, I don't think. We've just got a north wind coming down the east. And we're not on the coast or anything. We're quite a long way in from the coast, to the north of London. But... Um, yeah, there's this prevailing east, uh, northeast wind or something, and so it's cloudy, it's cold, it's most unpleasant. Everybody else in the UK, I believe, as far as I'm aware, is bathed in sunshine, but not here. We had some briefly at the weekend, but now it's it's now Thursday, and that feels like a distant memory. It feels like like summer's been and gone, and now we're back in the autumn. Still, we're hopeful. Maybe it'll come back. Maybe it'll come back sometime. Okay. So let's do... Let's do that. So I think I'm going to have a go at cutting off my corners, which I don't normally do. But I don't normally make paper covers either, so... This is all a learning curve, but that's why it's called Roxy's Weekly Challenge. But it's a challenge. It certainly is for me. Maybe I should glue it on first before I start cutting corners, eh? Because they might slip. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay, let's get my old fabric tack. See if I can get it to work. I've just refilled it, so I'm hoping it'll it will flow. I'm going to cover, actually, I don't think I'm going to cover the corners of the, I'm only going to go up to the edge of the this corner as it happens. So I think I might turn that off and just have it going up to the edge. and just turn in the other three sides. Because I'm going to cover this on top with fabric, so I don't need, I don't need that to be turned in. Because it won't show, there won't be an edge on, on display. Right, back to the, back to the gluing, just thinking things through. Fold that over. Do I need? Just trying to decide if I need this piece to be turned over at the end. I'm doing the, the sides because that, particularly this side, needs it because it's rough. But I don't know. Do I need to turn that over? 
I'm still quite tempted to put a piece of this up the side, so I might not bother. Mm. Maybe I will. Let's try. I'll cut the corner and just see how it looks. in the sides anyway. Okay, so that's the front cover. Now I'm still, I still keep looking at this because I do love it. And I might still go for that because this has got sort of um, leafy pattern on here. So maybe I'll go for this rather than this. I was nearly, I nearly decided, hadn't I? But I do like that. Go with where your heart is. So I don't really want this this bit at the top. I know I'm being fussy now, but I don't want this uh, this spotty bit. I'm going to tear that off. She says. That's it, I've got it. And I've still got a piece, a nice little piece for a tab or something, haven't I? But I just wanted to put that there. I've got to tear off the bottom half now. And tear that here. At least with this, using this piece, I won't use it that way. Maybe that way. That way. Or that way. That way. <laughs> if I use that, then I can use the other paper I was thinking of using on the back. So that could be the back. Hand like that. So then I can use the Artie Maze pitch paper on that, can I? Yep. there, tear that about there, okay, just pop this out of the way for a second, got to get this piece covered now, and so where's the Need to allow some to fold over. Oh no, it's the wrong way around. I said that didn't fit. Wasn't fitting properly, so it's got to go like that. Doesn't matter. So I just need to cut, tear this down a little bit. I don't need it this wide. Like that.
just enough to fold it over. matter I suppose which way round it is. Like that. Nope, like that. So that goes that way. Okay. And do the same. Fold over the sides. Oh, let's do the little bit of corner cutting. Again. Okay, so this is all now folded in and we have our back cover. So that goes like that. Like that, not goes like that. And then we have, have our little book. Let's hope they're the same size, yes. <laughs> so we had visions of them not quite ending up the same size, but I think we're okay. And it isn't meant to be a little scrappy book, so it's not a problem. Now, I've just had a thought. No, it's not big enough, is it? I actually quite like this bottom half. <laughs> a little bit better than the top half, which I had done to size. Isn't that just typical? But that's what I'll stick with because that's the one I've cut to size. So, I just need to do that now. So what we need to do, decide how much spine we want and then glue the book the covers on accordingly so i think we might want something like an inch and a half i'm going to do the same idea as rachel she did i think three signatures in hers so i might just put one there at that point and one at I haven't cut this to any, this is just the size it came up, so so if I'm doing an inch and a half it would come to about there. How is that? Is that even? Not really. So I'll come in about an inch and a quarter, back that up a little bit, to about there. Yeah, that's probably okay spine-wise, I think. So... I think that's enough. About there. Just trying to trying to get the but remember not to actually glue them on this way round, but I just want to get this get it fairly even on the on the actual fabric. Pull that out a bit, pull that in a little bit. I don't want a huge spine, do I? Yeah, something like that. I know she was a lot more um, she just gets on with it, does Rachel, she just goes for it, glues things down. I faff a lot more because I'm not as confident as she is about getting it right. She just does it. It's just, it just takes her no time at all. She probably made this in about 20 minutes, if that. And I'm already over half an hour. And I haven't finished. But it's all a learning curve for me, a lot, a lot, a lot of these things. I'm still learning. I feel like I've got so much more to learn about this craft. 
is one of the reasons I really enjoy doing the challenges because she pushes us out of our comfort zone, doesn't she? Makes us makes us try things we hadn't thought of doing before, which to her seem like bread and butter. She does these things so easily. It appears that she does them so easily. I'm sure. They weren't the first time she tried them. Pull that back a little bit, give myself a decent amount of spine. It's hard to know how much to allow, really. Don't know how big a spine I want. I'll pull it back a little bit, give myself enough for two, a few signatures, two or three, not sure. Something like that. Do that. Make sure that's all nice and stuck down. Okay. All right. Then we have that. Not sure it's entirely straight, but it's on now. <laughs> so now we just have to do the inside. And I'm going to put some Tyvek in the middle. Doesn't have to be as big as the. Um, doesn't have to be as wide as the fab as the outside fabric because I'm going to cover it with with more fabric anyway. sure why. Let's see. Yep, that should do it. And then just mark the length. This is just a reinforcement. I think uh, Rachel, when she did the challenge, she used some sort of sticky tape. I don't have any of that, so good old Tyvek it is. So yeah, so I shall do that. Stick that in. And having it go right into the into the fabric. seems to be glued well enough. Now, what can I put on the inside? I haven't really, haven't really got that far in my thinking. I quite like the idea of using some of this on the inside just because um, this is another one of her antique end papers. Um, but I need to find a fabric that will go with it now, don't I? So, oh, I wonder, wonder if that piece would work, this, this stripe. Would that go with that? That might actually look quite good, that. Maybe that's what I'll do. Again, I hadn't really planned to do that at all, but I think I quite like that. I think that's just, just nice and bright and jolly, isn't it? And we like bright and jolly. I like bright and jolly. It's also an old, old pattern, apparently. So I'm hoping I've got enough here to do both. Well, I'm not absolutely sure about that. If 
I combine it with some of the old paper, um, the old book page, there might well be enough then, right in there. So I think what I'll do, I'll fold it in half to make sure I don't use more than I more than half for one, and then I can use the other half for the other and make up the difference with the book page. That's what I'll do, I think. So, I have some of this lovely book page here. I've got another page of it. So, I will have enough. Too small now. Yes, I have. Of course, I have. Don't need to take that quite so far across there. <clears throat> so I, I always go really quiet when I'm thinking about what I'm doing. And of course, I made that too short. So, uh, uh, let me just see how far across does the fabric need to go. Sure, that's wide enough. That way round. Just to cover the tie back with a bit to spare. So Multitude of strings here. I love I love the frayed look. Who'd have, who'd have thought that? I wouldn't. Mrs. Neat and Tidy has been embracing the fray. Uh, that was the way round, I think. It was going to go. This way around would be nice. I've got it back to front. Nope, it's okay. Maybe I'll do it that way around. That'd be quite nice. And then... Oop. I could have that going that way. I don't think it would matter too much, although I think it's meant to be this way up. I'm just going to tear this across the top. The rough, slightly rougher edge. I 
I didn't want it to be straight, but I've obviously overdone it, so I'm going to use this piece now. Oh, that's, that just feels such a waste. Let's see what I can do. I'll just have to put something across there, won't I? That's all there is to it. Emphasize it even more. Okay. <clears throat> right. Let me not have that quite so high. Mark it about there. Got a little tiny piece down here, but I will find a way to cover that. Right, let's see. If I just, yep, I'm gonna have to start gluing these down now, aren't I? I don't need Fabri-Tac for this because it's paper onto paper. figure out what to do with this in a minute. Let's do the other side. both be the same height. Which is the front, which is the back. This was the back. It's just become the front. Oh my goodness, I've done it again. Put this, this, I've just turned the whole thing around and done it upside down, but actually it was one of the, it was the, it was the front page I was toying with anyway, so I don't think it really matters, luckily, because I've put it on upside down. <laughs> oh, this, this is like, I should just call this the upside down show, shouldn't I? Because that's what seems to happen. But luckily in this situation, it's not actually a major issue because I like this is what I like this as the front anyway. So that's what we've ended up with. Oh well. <laughs> oh, I don't know, you couldn't make it up, could you? Right. Okay, 
So I've got this piece left, so I can turn around. So now I've got my funny corner at the top, which is okay with me because I need to do something similar both sides, don't I? So, so I'll just tear that off. I've just got to find something to go in that corner. Go there. So we could do a little bit of this um, dyed paper of Rachel's. I've used that on a different one on the on the back cover, haven't I? Or can I put a bit of this on there? Put it over the top because I've already glued down the other side. But let's just tear a piece of this down. of this down here. Yep. I think that's what I'm going to do. Then I've used all the papers that I liked. And I don't mind, in this occasion, that it's a little bit clashy. Put this one on here. Now what am I using this for? I don't want to use that. I want to use this one. Right, so I've gone ahead, I've um, glued that piece down and then glued the other two pieces as well. So similar but not identical. Kind of, I suppose, like a bit, bit of a mirror image in a way. And I really, I really like that, how that's turned out. And I feel like this was meant to be on the front. Um, right, so all I've got to do now is glue in the piece down the middle, which is my lovely piece of fabric, which I'm going to do that way round. It's quite raggedy, and I, I quite like that. So this one, I'll bring the back the fabric tack, and we'll get that going. And we'll have that going right across and right up to the top. And of course we've got a little bit of a bit of a um what's Rachel called? Oh not Rachel, what's Gail called them? A gooba, glue gooba, or what they call them, I don't know what she calls it. But yeah, a bit of a blockage. Going at the 
So I like that they've got these bits of yellow which brings in the yellow from the paper. So yeah, I'm really, really liking how that's turned out. Almost like the inside more than the outside now. <laughs> Perhaps I should have done them the other way around. Who knows? But I haven't quite finished with the outside yet. I'm going to pretty that up a bit more. And so let's get my clusters in. I'm not sure whether we're going to go fabric or paper at the moment. There's options. But I did think maybe one or two of these would go quite well. Some of these bigger ones. They've actually got the same fabric in the background, haven't they? So maybe that's not such a great idea. But I'd also like to incorporate... Where's it gone? Oh, sorry. A piece of this, because this is the beautiful piece of lace I got from um, Shubba Dabba Doo -da. I really like to use a piece of that as well. So I might add something extra in the background. Might be too big. Um, I quite like this with the yo-yo, actually. I can turn it around. Let's just see how that looks. I feel like it needs another piece of fabric behind it. What can I use? I had several pieces pulled out. Ooh, can I use a piece of this gorgeous um, William Morris? I've probably got a smaller piece somewhere. But I, haven't, I can't lay my hands on it right now, so I'm just going to use a piece of this. Do love a bit of William Morris. Okay. So I wonder if I can just... Just add a little bit more interest. Right, so I've cut this, these two pieces of got two separate bits now. I think I quite like this piece. So I'll pop that there. It's all nice and raggedy. And then I've got this piece, which I have actually just cut a piece off. And I just want to take off this little edgy bit, both ends. And this in, well, I'll just cut it there, I think. So I've got that there, like that. How's that looking? Like that. And then I've got my cluster, which I could pop there, or maybe a bit higher. Anything else I can get on here? I'm thinking maybe a doily. Clearly I'm veering towards the school of more of more is more, but I have a box of doilies and I hardly ever remember to dip into them, so I did wonder if I could use a bit bit of doily. I have a few. <laughs> a few to choose from. What about something like that? Just for the... Oh, I have got this quite old one. Mm, let's see. underneath. I think this might be too blendy against the background. Or 
have this piece. Just really grungy this piece. I'm not really into grunge that much. The trouble is that blends too much with that and the other one blends too much with the background. <laughs> That's not necessarily quite what I'm looking for, is it? What about this piece? Which kind of it's a big one. It's almost a shame to use it on something small like this, isn't it? Because I could use that on a journal cover. Yeah, perhaps I better not use that. Totally lost my piece of lace, it got caught up with one of the doilies. So let's put that back there. No. Um, I still quite like this, I think, even though it's a little bit blendy with the background. I do quite like it. On there. Let's get this lined up. Not that piece. Do I want to do that? Or do, I, do I want to do that? Yeah, maybe I want to do that. I think I'm going to cut a piece of this off. Because it's too bulky underneath. So we got that, that, and that. Something like that. So I'm going to glue these on. I can't sew them together like Rachel did, just it's too much. So I'm just going to glue them on and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've glued all my pieces on, um, my doily and my lace and my bit of William Morris and all of that. And I'm really pleased with that. But while I was gluing, I had a little bit of an accident. Well, not an accident, but um, the, the you know what fabric -Tac's like. It, it, I hadn't experienced this before, but it goes for the nail polish. So I just I realised I got a little bit of pink on my doily right there, where the fabric tag had peeled off, had obviously melted off or something. I don't know, um, but the, my nail varnish had come off onto the doily. So I had to do a bit of a quick think about what I might do just to cover that up. And I I could have just put a flower on, but I just thought that was a bit too, a bit boring, a bit obvious. So I went in my little bowl, I've got a, f a little bowl of jingle dangle things I've made ages and ages, or oh, probably a couple of years ago. Um, I think it was a paper outpost video that I watched where she made loads of this kind of thing. never remember to use them, but I thought, well, I'll see what I've got. And I thought, well, I really like this bit of yellow fabric. It pours in the yellow from the, from the middle of the yo-yo. Um, and also, of course, it, it kind of echoes what's going on inside as well. And I just thought it was really pretty fabric, and a bit of another and a piece of lace dangling from it. Even that's got a bit of pink on it. Looking at it, I think that's just a bit of thread that seems to have got. Well, it might be pink from the actual fabric. Let's just trim that off. Um, so yeah, and I'm, I wasn't sure how well it would sit on here in the middle, but it's lying quite flat. I'm quite pleased how that's lying, and it's given a little bit of texture, a bit of movement. I really like that. So sometimes out of disaster comes actually something something good. So that's my cover. I'm pleased with how that's turned out. So in the next um, Roxy Creations challenge uh, video that I managed to squeeze in, not sure when that'll be, 
I will do the uh, this signatures, single or plural, not sure yet. See how it goes. Okay, so thank you for joining me today. I hope this hasn't gone too, too long. I've completely lost track of time, so um, there will be editing to be done, I'm sure. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye for now.